In this video, we're going to have a look at equivalent forms for functions and formulas. When it comes to giving the rule or formula describing a function, there are many different forms in which it can be given. Example 1. Prove that the following two rules are equivalent by determining the output values. For the two flow diagrams, we are given two different rules, but for both we have the same input values. So, if we also get the same output values, it means these two rules are equivalent. So if we now start off by substituting minus 1 into the first rule, you will have minus 3 minus 1, which gives you an output value of negative 4. If I substitute in 0, I will have 0 minus 1, which gives me minus 1. And when I substitute 1 in, I will have 3 minus 1, which is an output value of 2. The substitution into the second rule requires a bit more simplification. When you substitute in minus 1, you first have to simplify inside this bracket to minus 3, then multiply the plus 3 in to get minus 9, and now you will have a final answer of minus 4, which is the same as for the first rule. If I substitute in 0, I will have a minus 2 inside that needs to be multiplied by 3 to get minus 6. And if I add 1, I end with minus 1. Same goes for 1. In the bracket, I'll have minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. And when I add 5, I will have a final value of 2. So here we can see that both rules gave exactly the same output values for the given input values. So we can say that these two rules are equivalent. You can also use algebra to prove that these two rules are equivalent. If we take the second rule and simplify algebraically, we will first multiply in the 3 to get 3x minus 6. And when we now add up the like terms, we will end with 3x minus 1, which is exactly our first rule which means these two rules are equivalent. Example 2. Show that the following two formulas are equivalent. If I want to do this algebraically, I can take the first rule and multiply the x in to simplify. And when I do that, I will have x squared plus 2x, which is the second formula, which means they are equivalent. Or you can use input and output values again. Here I have a table and I've chosen three input values. So when I start off substituting, I'm going to start substituting minus 2 into my first equation to get minus 2 times minus 2 plus 2 and this will give me 0. When I substitute 0 into the first function, I will also get 0. And when I substitute 2 into the same function, the output value is 8. Next, I'm going to substitute these same input values into the second formula. So that will be negative 2 squared plus 2 times minus 2. And that is 4 minus 4, which is 0. When I substitute 0 into this function, I will get 0 plus 0. And in the last one, when I substitute 2 in, I will have 4 plus 4, which is 8. So from the table, we can also see that for specific input values, these two formulas give the same output values, which means they are equivalent. All the knowledge that you have gained in the last few videos about input and output values can be very useful when working with formulas in science and technology. Example 1. The formula for converting degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit is given. Question A. Determine the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit if it is 28 degrees Celsius. In this formula, degrees Celsius is the input value and the output value is degrees Fahrenheit. So we can determine the degrees Fahrenheit by substituting 28 into C's place. This means that 28 degrees Celsius is the same as 82,4 degrees Fahrenheit. Question B. 
What is the temperature in degrees Celsius if it is 68 degrees Fahrenheit? In this case, the output value is given and we need to work with this formula backwards to determine the input value. This rule says we need to take the input value, times it by 9, then divide by 5 and add 32 to get the output value. So if we want to do this backwards to get the degrees Celsius, we are going to take our Fahrenheit degrees and first subtract 32. Then instead of dividing by 5, we are going to multiply by 5 and instead of multiplying by 9, we will divide by 9. We are given that the degrees Fahrenheit is 68 and when doing this rule backwards, we will see that the degree Celsius is then 20 degrees.